Greetings and happy holidays, everybody. My name is Ben, and welcome back to the bench for another episode of our 12 Sprues of Kitmas. Today, we are going to be moving forward on our next kit for day number two. We're going to hopefully get something awesome. Let's go ahead and pull out that box and see what we have in store for us. Now, again, just to reiterate, I have not done any sort of sorting with any of these model kits. I don't know what are in any of these cubbies. My girlfriend loaded that up. So, so far, she's done a really good job. That first kit, the KI-61, was a lot of fun. So I'm not sure what we're getting in the second day, but let's go ahead, grab our exacto knife, make a little bit of an incision here, and we're gonna check it out. This is actually honestly going very well, I might add. I've already completed one kit, and I know we have a long way to go yet, but I'm hopeful we can go ahead and get through it. Again, the whole point of this is just to have fun so that's our goal. Now let's go ahead and push our hand down through the top of this and we're going to fish around and hopefully we'll pull something great. Here it is. Let's go ahead and pull this out. An F4F Wildcat. Interesting. Now I've actually never built a Wildcat before. We're sticking with that Pacific Theater vibe so that's interesting. Let's go ahead and pull out the kit though and take a look at the parts. Now this is an older Academy kit as far as I can tell. The packaging is very different than what we see from the new ones and uh, I'm not sure exactly how this will build up. Sometimes it can be a bit hit or miss. So let's go ahead and just see what we have here. A couple poly bags. We do have a stand so that's interesting. Might be kind of time to do an in-flight model. That might be kind of neat. Otherwise yeah lots of parts and pieces. Decals are very simple. Don't have a lot of color options or choices here. And let's check out the instructions. Instructions are just one page with the front part being color call out for the exterior and then the back part of that being the assembly. One thing I am noticing right off the bat though is that the color call outs here are actually different than both the box art and the instruction art up here at the top. They call out for almost like a North Atlantic style scheme, so that gray over the white. Now on the other side of that, we have all the assembly instructions for the entire aircraft. And to be honest, there's not a lot of detail here. That's not necessarily unexpected. It is 172nd scale and it is an older Academy kit, but still would have been nice to have a little bit more detail. I know coming off of the KS61 though, maybe that's just kind of the way it is for 172nd. I don't really know. Let's go ahead and open this up though and check out the parts. Now Academy does give us a pilot, though he's not really much of a pilot to be honest. You kind of can't really see a lot of detail. It's too soft and just looks like a molded blob. So we're not going to be using that. We also don't have much interior detail like cockpit seat or instrument panel, anything like that. So again, not going to go ahead and use those. The rest of the aircraft though looks pretty decent. Plastic does have recessed panel lines, though they are a little bit heavy. But again, this is a very simplistic kit, so I'm not really that surprised. We do have some very nice looking wing details for the ammo bay covers and then of course the wing fold and all of that. We do have landing gears that can be deployed open or closed, so that's kind of nice. Maybe we can do that in-flight display. Might be a good change of pace. So let's go ahead and just dive right on into the initial assembly, guys. We're going to jump into a time lapse. I'm going to start by masking off the canopy. We're going to start getting the aircraft assembled, get that stand all assembled too, and then we'll see how we look at the end of that. I think for the canopy, I'm going to go ahead and airbrush the inside of that a black color. That's going to go ahead and just black it out so that we can't see the lack of detail. And then we'll go ahead and mask off on the outside and then paint that up as we need to for the rest of the aircraft. So let's go ahead and jump right on in, guys. Get this thing moving.
All right, everybody. So we have assembled the stand and the aircraft in its basic form. And as you can see, yeah, it looks kind of cool. You know, it definitely has that wildcat appearance. We have the stand built up as well. It does fit right into the bottom of the aircraft, though the fit is a little bit loose. It doesn't really fit too securely in there. So we might have to do a little bit of shimming or something or just maybe super glue it. I don't know. But we're not going to install it just yet. I need to go ahead and start moving on with some of the other areas like the seams. We'd want to get this thing primed, figure out what camo we're going to use, and then go ahead and mask off and paint it. So I'm assuming that the kit right here with the decals as they are is more meant for like an FM2 that might have served in the European theater in the Atlantic Ocean. So I'm thinking that that might be the case with this, though I'm not entirely certain. I don't really know much about the Wildcat, but that's all well and good. We're going to go ahead and move on. We're going to fix up any sort of seams. The seams have been very manageable so far, so that's great. Then we're going to go ahead and hit it with a white primer, and then we'll get the camo masked off and get that airbrushed up. So back into the time lapse. Let's keep this going. Moving right along, everybody, we have our aircraft nicely primered, so it's looking good with that. And we can keep our primer coat for the bottom underside surface color as well, which is helpful. We're also going to go ahead and do a little bit of pre-shade on the top surface. And then we'll use maybe some neutral gray or maybe some dark sea gray. Go ahead and airbrush over the top of that. Keep that very thinly coated. Plus with that white undersurface, it's probably going to shift that gray a little bit lighter, which is why I'm going with the white primer, because it helps to kind of shift those colors back into scale. At least, well, that's what I assume. Now, in terms of weathering, once I get this all painted up, I'm going to probably try to do a little bit of fading on the top of the camo, but I haven't done any sort of pre-shade on the undersurface because I'm really just kind of hoping that I can use some panel line accent, just paint it over and then wipe it down, and that should be enough to pop out that detail. Now, we're going to go ahead and also do a little bit of pre-shading up on top to hopefully get that fade going. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to accomplish that because it's a really dark color, but we'll go ahead and give it our best, see what we can do. We'll get some gloss coat, get some decals, do some weathering, and then we finally finish it off with a flat coat, and then I'll go ahead and show you guys what we come up with. So let's go ahead and jump into our last time lapse. Let's push this thing through, get this kit all wrapped up.
All right, everybody. And here is our finished F4F Wildcat, all nicely painted up in the North Atlantic camo. So we've got that gray surface on the top. And we've got the white surface underneath. We have the blacked out canopy, of course, because there's no detail. The propeller does spin, if that's important to you. We went ahead and glued in the stand so we have something to sit on our desk, either here at the home office or at work. It just depends. Threw a little bit of easy line in the back of that. And I think that's a really nice touch. So let's go ahead and give you a close up. Now, honestly, I really like this paint job a lot better than my KS61. So at least I'm improving, which is great. I went ahead and I used a little bit of our weathering powder by AIM to go ahead and streak that gun dust. I also came in with a colored pencil and marked out a couple of scuffs and nicks here and there on the paint. As you can see, the panel and accent really made everything pop. And to be honest, I probably should have used something a little bit lighter, like a gray color. But we do have our clear windows in there. We have our landing gears glued up into the folded position. We've got our drop tanks on and we mounted it to the stand. Not too bad. In terms of fit, guys, this actually went together very, very well. I don't really have any major complaints. It is not a bad little kit. Not much on detail, though, for the interior cockpit. But the outside looks decent. Looks like a Wildcat. Very fun little build. Very quick build, too. So that's excellent. Excellent. But we're going to go ahead and call it quits for today, guys. We have finished off day number two for our 172nd scale F4F Wildcat. Now we're going to move on to day number three, and who knows what we have in store for us. So until then, you know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. Happy holidays to each and every one of you, and we'll see you back here on the next episode of the 12 Sprues of Kidness. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you soon.